What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's All Tea, All Shade, Love, and Hip Hop, New York, Season 8, Episode 12 review. So, we start off tonight's episode exactly where we left off last episode with everybody at Carl's sparring ses session. So Sophia, the body, and Safari are there when Jaque and Cayenne walk in all hugged up. You know she came there to get him back. Snoop like, well, what you gonna do? <laughs> you said you wanted your man back to go get him. <laughs> so she's like, that ain't my man. You know, I ain't trying to get hit with another smoothie, bitch. So Safari and Sophia walk over to greet Jaque and Cayenne, but of course, there is a trust, trust, I can't even say it, strategically placed table in between them with merch so they can't easily get to one another in case something pops off, which it does. So, Sophia and Cayenne, if y'all paid attention, her was just alike. They both had a part down the middle, a low ponytail, swooped to the side. I was like, well, don't great pussies think alike. So... Sophia says that she didn't want to come there to start anything. She just wanted to come to apologize for what happened between her and Jaque. She was very nice and very respectful and adult about, this, about the situation. Jaque says they'll never be cool because of what she did and asks why is she there. She says she's there because Safari invited her. Safari, Safari then goes on to explain that he was trying to help but didn't know that Jaque had already moved on to something else. Cayenne says, so you're the one that flipped over. You're the one that Mariah flipped over. What what you call her, Sophia the Thotty? And I was like, oh, Jesus, be offense. This is not going down. And Jaquay like, uh. And she was like, ain't that what you said? Ain't that what you said? And Sophia was like, I was never a thought. Excuse you. And Cayenne tells her to hush because I'm talking to my man. And then Sophia roll her eyes. And then Cayenne say, oh, you rolled your eyes? And uh, Sophia was like, yeah, I rolled my eyes. And then, uh. Cayenne says, you did tell her that my name is Cayenne, right? My name ain't Boo. No, no, I'm sorry. I missed the part. She, Cayenne says, did you roll your eyes? Sophia said, yeah, I did. Ask, why are you so mad if this is your new, if this is your man now, Boo? And then Cayenne says, you told her my name is Cayenne, right? Then she tries to lunge at Sophia, but the guards step in to separate them. Sophia is being held up against the wall yelling, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. <laughs> I was like, what that got to do with anything? She cute too. But in this situation, I will most definitely say Sophia was not in the wrong. She did nothing wrong. She was very adult about the situation. Cayenne acted like a whole goddamn monkey. It was her attitude and everything towards Sophia was uncalled for. She hadn't said nothing out the way. You were doing team too much for camera time. Girl, sit down, Cayenne. You was you you acted stupid. You real stupid. You need to be embarrassed by the way you acted in this scene. And even your nigga was embarrassed by you when he said it. So, uh, Jaque, like I said, is embarrassed. He escorts Cayenne out and they leave. So, Juju meets with Remy and Jonathan to talk. She tells him about her getting her master's in business and asks Jonathan to do the makeup for her play. Yandy is also going to be in this play. I just got a feeling this play is about to be ghetto as hell. So Yandy shows up and also Remy is there. My bad. Yandy shows up and asks if they raise funds and supplies for the people of St. Martin and that she actually wants to go down there and physically help. They're all down, of course. She says that she also wants to bring the younger girls, but Remy don't want to be around a bunch of fighting ass bitches. You know, this bitch is still on parole. Remy says, you know what? I'm going to chalk it up. I'm going to talk to Bianca and Mariah because I'm very disappointed in Mariah because I see a lot of potential in her. And I heard about her getting into it at, you know, Safari's event. So Mariah goes to Rich for help with this whole entire situation regarding self and Dream Doll and Brie. We go back into the situation of her and Rich dating. I forgot all about the fact that she used to fuck with Rich. That just totally went out of my mind. I'm pretty sure a lot of you forgot too as well. So the backstory was her and Rich dated on and off for three years. They've known each other for seven. But when she messed with Cisco, that caused a rift between them. She apologizes to him for letting Cisco use her and says that she only fucked with him because she found out Rich was in a serious relationship with Monique and she was in her feelings and she felt some type of way. She gets emotional as they're talking and says she will always love him. And he just looking at her like, okay, sis, I know I can get the box when I want to, but okay. He doesn't apologize to her for anything. And he really don't even know if he can fuck with her like that ever again. She's by the scene wearing her own hair and she looks so much better without all them stupid ass wigs on. I don't really like her dye job. It, her hair is um, 
had a lot of like uh flyaways and shit like that. I just don't like that just blunt ass platinum colored hair. I wish it would have some dimensions to it, some low lights, some highlights. I don't know, but at least she wearing her own damn hair for God's sakes. So she brings up the situation with her dream, Brie and Bianca. She tells him that his artist, Brie, is the cause of all this drama and tells him what happened at Snoop's event. Now, I will agree. Brie is behind all of this nonsense. All of this is that little troll doll's fault. Brie is a shit starter. And to even go further with how much of a shit starter and a liar she is, y'all remember a few weeks ago at Diddy's um, New Year's Eve party, how Ra Ali and Sky got into it at the fight and had that fight on the red carpet. Brie got her ass all on Instagram live talking about some she was there. She saw it. Um, uh, Did she say Sky whooped Ra? Yeah, she said Sky whooped Ra Ali's ass, this, this, and that, gassing the fight up like she was there. Then we see the tape and we saw it was nothing like that. Neither one of them won because all uh, uh, Ra Ali did was grab her by her and, you know, she snuck and did that with, you know, uh, Sky wasn't even prepared to even defend herself. It wasn't no big melee or nothing like that. The little girl's a liar and it's just she just she just starving for attention. Ugh, she irks. So she asks him, Mariah asks him to fire Bree. And he says, you know, he'll talk to her. And she goes in for a kiss. And instead he kisses her on the cheek. And Safari then meets with Jaque himself. He apologizes to self for, I mean, to Jaque about what happened at the sparring session. Jonathan goes to his sister Jasmine and talks to her about their mother. He brings up a folder that Jasmine found when she, when he was ten years old. The folder explained why his mom sent him to the Dominican Republic for gay conversion therapy. And it's so crazy that they're even talking about this on this episode because if you've been watching this season of Shameless, that's been um, one of the kids' main storyline about you know conversion therapy. You know, families trying to pray the gay out of their kids and this, this, and that. So. It was horrible to hear his story and all he went through as a child. No child should ever go through what he had to go through for a child. It made me look at him in a totally different way. And I felt really bad for uh, Jonathan. Um, the sister says that all she knew was that they injected him with hormones. And I was like, well, shit, that's all. That's enough right there. Like, why is a 10 year old being injected with hormones? You know what they could do to a person? Like, oh, my God, what if they would have overdosed him? Like, anything could have happened. So he says it was more than that. They used to lock him in a room for hours at a time and put him in restraints for hours and then shock him when he answered questions wrong. That's some fucked up ass shit, man. And, you know, he breaks down and starts crying and she comes around the counter and hugs him because she's a bartender. He said that he begged his mom one time when she called to check on him to come home. But she said no, because she felt like the therapy would make his life better because she got tired of him being bullied back at home. And he was just like, you know, I depended on my mom to help me and save me. And when I needed her the most, basically, she kind of turned her back on me. And that's why. He has had resentment towards his mother and they haven't been as close as they could have been all these years. And so she urges him to talk to his mother and tell their mom how he feels. So Mo and Carl talk about this IG damn page that he snuck and got behind her back. He said he was going to have her run, run the page for him. But then she hit him with the, then why would you block me then if you want me to run the page? And he said he didn't know she was blocked. Remy asks Mariah. <laughs> Remy meets with Bianca at a coat store, and they all look really New York. New York is, you know, that's the New York girl look. Some long weaves, some big shades, a fur foot um, coat that hits your mid waist, a cute little bodysuit, some tight jeans, a belt, some boots, a bag. That's the New York girl look, child. So they both look really cute, but then Mariah Lynn came in and it was like, wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> she didn't look as cute as the rest of them when they look on some. So uh, Remy asks Mariah about what happened between her and Dream. Mariah explains the situation. Remy suggests they all sit down and talk. Um, they like, all right, I guess we'll do it. So Bree is at a fake video shoot with Trina while Rich watches on. He pulls her to the side to talk and he goes off about her acting a fool. 
um, all the time in public and involving herself in mess that ain't got shit to do with her. She says that she saw Mariah talking to her friend, boyfriend, and had to say something. I was like, you sound so fucking stupid, little ugly ass girl. Where is your boyfriend? Why you worried about who, who boyfriend talking to who? Do you got a boyfriend, little ugly? So he tells her to worry about yourself. And I'm like, hallelujah. So then we see Cayenne. She in the booth killing it, fucking it up. She can really rap. I like her little live music thing. It was really dope. Jaquay comes to check on her and Mariah is with him. Mariah's like, what's going on between y'all? You know, I see the googly eyes and they like, you know, we vibing, we kicking it. And then the conversation of what happened between Cayenne and Sophia, the body comes up. She says, then that you know back in the day she got jumped by a group of girls and they broke her jaw she almost died she couldn't eat for months and you know she starts to cry but uh, i ain't see no tears <laughs> she fake cried my nigga and she said she don't want to fight no more and she's trying to get over that part of her life and i was like you really need to especially since you've already let us know that you have a baby that ain't even one years old yet girl sit down somewhere and stop trying to fight somebody after you got your jaw broke bitch i would never want to fight nobody again bitch especially my fat ass i love to eat bitch i would really be bad so yandy invites brie to talk to the other girls and she agrees Mo meets with Yandy at her artist Alex rehearsal. Mo says that she needs to be put on um, with her career. She's trying to get her career back on track. And in the same breath, then bring up her little lying ass husband, Carl. And I was like, why are you using this platform to steady talk about this little ugly, dusty ass, cheating ass, lying, dirty dick ass nigga? When you the one keep on talking about you need to get your career on track, you're on a platform as big as Love is Hip Hop, Love and Hip Hop is, which is one of VH1's most highest rated show, if not the highest rated show on the network. Why aren't you using this platform to put your voice back out there to get people to want to put you on the hook again you were the hook queen bitch in the 2000s bitch like why aren't you using this platform to push yourself out there you steady running behind this little ugly ass nigga i'm like you so stupid limo this is like your fourth chance on a damn reality show and you're not using it to your fucking abilities next thing you know she gonna be on marriage boot camp watch recycling this same stupid ass storyline so she asked Yandy for help with her career when his little dusty ass run up there with some flowers. He say he's sorry again and she forgive him again. And I was like, if you bitches don't take a key out of Mary J. Blige's life, me and Monique was talking about this shit last night. I was like, look how Mary J. Blige was over there dealing with Ken do blind, cheating, ugly, hazel eyed ass. And as soon as she dropped this motherfucker, where is she at right now? It was, it was looking dark there for a minute. You know, her going through all these financial problems and shit with this nigga, him cheating on her and, you know, doing her the way that he did. But look at the blessings that came out on the other end of everything Kendu did to Mary J. Blige. She is nominated for a SAG Award, Golden Globes. Now she is in this other A-list territory in her career that she has never really been in you know of course they fucked with her but she's never been acknowledged for her film work so now this will lead to her having more roles you know nine times out of ten she's going to be nominated for an oscar look at the blessings that have come for mary j blige leaving an ain't shit ass nigga alone god be having blessings for you ladies on the other end of the fucking dark ass tunnel when you thinking that it's going to be bleak and thinking that oh my god if i leave him what's going to happen to me i'm gonna be sad i'm gonna be depressed you know da -da 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 -da, and it hurt and it hurts really really bad when you're trying to get over somebody but i'm telling you once you get past that hurt you will never believe all the blessings god will rain down upon you but he ain't gonna rain them down upon you until you get the negative and toxic energy out your life because god don't want your blessings to then rain down on a motherfucker that ain't uh what's not the word uh willing that ain't um that ain't uh that the best ain't for the ass shit you know what the hell i'm trying to say it's for you so take that heed so jonathan meets with his mama Miriam and sister jasmine and his mama look like a puerto rican man in a dress <laughs> was ugly and fuck she looked like pablo escobar so he <laughs> explains that her sending him away hurt him and says that you know the hormones hurt him so bad that he couldn't bend his legs and he tells his mom about the shock therapy and the mama don't want to hear it it gets emotional and the sister beg her to listen jonathan tells her that you know he resented her but wants to move past everything and they hug it out Prayfully, you know, their relationship can get better. Yandy brings in a bin to the meeting with all the girls so the girls can take their shoes off at the door. Remy is there waiting on her. So, um, she say if they can't get along, they won't be going to St. Martin's. So, Mariah and Bianca show up ready to fight, but 
uh, they take their shoes off. And child, Bianca motherfucking wig. Y'all, I had to make a video about this shit. Look at, <laughs> look at this shit. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, Jesus. And Bianca, I love you. But why, girl? Why? 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 What would you do with the same attitude? <laughs> would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ear and I'll sing you a song. <laughs> Don't you get mad at me if I sing out a key. Oh, baby, what the fuck is that on your head? Can somebody tell me, Lord Jesus, why is your lace missing? Why the fuck is it so far back on your head? Who in the fuck glued that down? Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I swear to God, there's something wrong with me. One of these bitches gonna fight me one day. But that shit looked fucking terrible. She knew better than that. So they came ready to fight. They got on their jeans. They got on their sneakers. They had on their little uh, bomber jackets. But they take their shoes off. And so before Brie and Bianca, I mean Brie and Dream show up, Yandy say, how about we stand over here so y'all won't be in their pathway when they walk in because they ain't want nothing to pop off. So then Dream and Brie show up ready to fight too, bitch. Um, they sit down across from each other. They took off their shoes and everything too. This conversation starts with Bree saying, I didn't want this situation to go crazy. I ain't trying to fight nobody. I'm really about music. If I say something about her, that's how I express myself. And Remy quickly checks her and says, you know, that there are repercussions to the things that you say in songs and on social media and that she has to be held accountable for the things that you say. Bitch, you started all this shit with your little ugly ass. Now that you in the room, now you don't want to fight because you ain't about that life. And if I was Dream, I would have been looking at her like, oh, so now you don't want to fight. Now it's all about music, but you didn't jump, had me to jump into this shit. I would slap this shit out your little ugly ass. I would have been pissed off if I was Dream. So... Remy tells them, you know, promoters aren't going to want to book you guys if y'all always in some mess. And Bianca say, they booking me. <laughs> and Yeti say, Bianca, stop. So then Bianca jump in and say the same way she said she wanted to drag me. That's how all this stuff started. Bree says, is it? Is it? I know what you did and you know what you did. You were thought. You fucked everybody. You were in my text message talking shit about me. And then Bianca is tired of talking. She then tries to race across the room to hit Bree, but security jumps in and stops him. But if y'all paid attention, Remy jumped her ass up like y'all little bitches got me fucked up. I will shoot every last one of you bitches. Let's not forget, I don't talk shit. I shoot bitches for real. <laughs> you better ask that last bitch I shot in the stomach. I was like, girl, and the episode went off. So that's my thoughts on Love and Hip Hop New York. More bad wigs. More drama. Can't wait for next week's episode. Now I'm about to go watch Love and Hip Hop Miami. Tell me what y'all thought once again about the whole entire episode down below. I love you guys. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please the fuck do. What the fuck are you waiting on? Uh, and thumbs up this video and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all that shit. It's always down below in the description bar. Love you guys. Bye.